thunder of jets in an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle, and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. Hurry, Bullwinkle, the show's about to start. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wave to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The theme. John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. We're going to have a lot of fun. Come on and join us. Sure, there's always room for one more. Mexico. Just over the horizon lay the sleepy little village of Mucho Loma. English translation, much mud. Folk who dwelt there were so tuckered out, slashing their way through the streets, they spent most of the day and night regaining their strength. Tell me, Jose, you old stick in the mud. Are you too tired to play tiddly winks? I too tired to tiddly, but I gonna take 40 winks. It was just about then that Guadalupe Rodriguez made his untimely entrance into Mucho Loma. It will be chill today, but at to Mali, but oh by golly, blame it all on Sam or Sally. The arms of Morpheus were fractured. Hey, you with the big mouth, you are under arrest. What for I under arrest, senor Sherry? City ordinance, no more a cuatro, dos cinco, being a loud mouth during siesta. It was one year later that a tight-lipped Guadalupe walked out of jail, mounted his loyal steed, rode at least 200 miles without saying a word, halted in the middle of nowhere, and said... Dirty cotton-picking town! Revenge had burned deep into his tone-deaf head. And his plan for attaining it was at the very least bizarre. First, he stole a branding iron, one with an O at the end. Next, he made off with a black cowboy suit that had once been worn by Sunset Carson. That night, when all of Mucho Loma was peacefully slumbering, a masked rider galloped in and raised an unbelievable ruckus. Hey, 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 everybody up! Nobody going to sleep! The dam is breaking! Rise and shine, open it up! Lights were frantically lit, but not the citizens. They stumbled out of their beds, alarmed by the uproar. Doggone, this mud is ruining my Dr. Denton's. Don't worry about the mud. Look what's coming. Down the street he dashed, pausing long enough to stab his hot branding iron here, there, everywhere. <laughs> the mark of zero. Thus begins a terrible tale, a tale of endless nights in which the masked marauder tormented the town, not so much as allowing a child to close its eyes and sleep. Red-eyed, thoroughly distraught, the town council held an emergency meeting. <laughs> Senores, please, no bickering. Now, we must hire someone to capture this notorious night rider with the big mouth. Any suggestions? Let's call in the Lone Ranger. No, he's got problems of his own. He just found out Tanto is a girl. Suppose we leave this perplexed group and look in on our heroes, Rocky and Bowwinkle, whose touring sedan has come to an unscheduled stop atop a hill overlooking Mucho Loma. I think we made a wrong turn when we left Tallahassee. Well, you had the map, Bullwinkle. I had what map, Rob? The one I told you to keep under your hat. This is not a hat. This is a hat rack. I mean, check, I bet me go. Well, chances are we're lost then and probably out of gas. I shall check the gas tank. And so he did while Rocky surveyed the town below. Sure hope there's a garage down there. Well, I checked the gas tank. It's still there. I know it's there. Is there any gas in it? I shall check. Oh, God. Say, Rock, I can't see inside the tank. Got a match? You strike a match and we'll blow up. <laughs> it must be a joke. Bullwinkle was smart enough not to use a match. <laughs> You're right, sir. I shall use my lighter. You couldn't call it a complete mistake, for it not only catapulted the moose back into the car, but sent it reeling down the hill at a breakneck clip. And of all things, right at the Mucho Loma town hall. Will they get together? Will they hit it off right? Don't miss the boys bounce back or springtime in the Rocky.
Enchilada lovers unite, for in our preceding installment, that pale banging symbol crashing cap shooting desperado Zero gained his vengeance upon the Mexican village of Muchaloma by keeping them awake nights. We're not doing so well during the days also. I wasn't too sure myself that Rocky and Bullwinkle would be in this story until we saw them parked high on the hill just above the town. I don't see any sign saying this is Mulholland Drive. Neither do I. I'm afraid we're lost. They were also perilously low on fuel. And you know what they say, there's no fuel like a heaven got the guts to finish it. A check of the gas tank brought immediate results. Bullwinkle, you ought to know better than to expose a lighter to a gas tank. That was last episode, Rock. This is this one. Down the hill they rode in a direct line for the town hall. Senores, something tells me that help is on the way. <laughs> they were on the way, all right. Caramba, our beautiful town hall is a mess. Yeah, it's a mess hall now. Honest, fellas, we're awfully sorry this happened. You see... But the forthright little squirrel couldn't explain his way out of it. In jig time, they were in a cell. Say, Mr. Sheriff, could you tell us what we're in for? For about three years. Hokey smoke. Oh, chin up, Rock. That'll go by like 1,095 days. There was one consolation. At least they could get some sleep, or so they thought. Sure enough, no sooner did the sun go down than Zero made another attack. Can you see what's going on, Bullwinkle? Yeah, there's a guy who looks like Warner Baxter out there. Oh, it couldn't be Warner Baxter. How about Warner Brothers? All night long, a figure in black galloped back and forth, creating a horrendous racket. It wasn't until dawn that he retreated back into the hills. Well, at least now we can get some shut eye. No, no, senores. It's time for you to receive your sentence. But you told us last night we'd gotten three years. That was for destroying the town hall. Now you get a second term for destroying the mayor's apartment. We in Mucho Loma, English translation much mod, are very forgiving. You hear that, Brock? He is forgiving us. See, si, I am all for giving you 99 years in jail. However, I'm going to cut that down to 98 years. Your Honor, you do that and you'll never catch that noise-making bandit. Momento, senores. What do you know about Zero? He used to run around with a little fella named Glorioski. Right, and we're the only ones who can make him stop riding through town. But we'll only do it if you let us go free. If we let you go after zero, how do we know you won't stop until you are out of the country? Hold a hostage. Sure, we'll let you keep the sheriff here. It's all right by you, sheriff. It's all right. An hour or so later, no, no, I guess, guess it was more like a half hour. Well, check that. Make it, make it 45 minutes. Our plucky heroes left on their perilous quest. Narrator sounds a little confused. Yeah, must be the tropic zone. Uh, no, it's my watch. Anyway, although they scoured the area, not a sign of zero did they find. No. No sense in going any farther. Let's camp before it gets dark. Do you think it's safe? I mean, that Zero guy's liable to sneak up on us, and... This was one of the few times the moose was right. For while they set up camp directly above them on a plateau stood a huge boulder. The same unsteady boulder we've used many times before. And behind it, already hard at work, prying it loose, was Zero. Oh, drop anything important to catch our next thrilling episode, Rock Meets Rock, or Thud and Blunder! The last time we looked in on Muchaloma, it was staggering under the nightly attacks of a noisy night rider. Okay, everybody out of the pool. Nobody going to sleep. Here we go. 20 Riskido. Actually, this night rider is Guadalupe Rodriguez. Oh, please, to vamoose, Senor Loudmouth. We must get some eye shot. Never. I have sworn revenge in Sepandistan. Holy! The Knight Rider became known as the notorious Desperado Zero. That's my mark. Luckily or unluckily, depending on whose side you're on, Rocky and Bullwinkle entered Mucho Loma and were hauled before the judge. Ninety-nine years in jail. But what for, Your Honor? For jaywalking. That's jaywording. Whatever it was, the only way of evading imprisonment was to go out and bring Zero in. Just as we closed last time, the boys were encamped at the base of a towering plateau, unaware that the crafty Zero was attempting to smash their plan. I'm going to smash something else besides plans. Meanwhile, just below... You sure wish I had a pillow to rest my sleepy head upon. Try a rock. I don't seem to have a rock, Rock. Here, I'll toss one. Well, it's a good thing I didn't need a mountain. You probably would have thrown the world. Shh. Somebody's up there. And somebody up there doesn't like us. It seemed like a good idea to camp somewhere else. But no matter where they tried to bed down, some large, definitely hostile object always seemed to come perilously close to... See, that's what I told you. This zero is going to be tough to capture. We'll find another way, that's all. 
Say, those wanted posters, could any of those people be Zero? I doubt it. This one here is walking behind you. What's he wanted for? Don't you think a name like that is criminal? Senor behind you is serving time in Guadalajara. Well, he can't be Zero. This next one is Chichi Vasquez, a very shady lady. What did she do, sell umbrellas? Well, she can't be Zero either. Of course not. She's a lady. That's no lady, that's my wife. Look at this last poster, Bowinkle. Guadalupe Rodriguez, wanted for singing songs. Well, let's look him up. You never know, he could be Zero. Once more, the little squirrel had hit the nail on the head. For at that very moment, near a well on the fringe of town, Guadalupe was washing his branding iron, the iron that Zero used to leave his mark. Oi, senorita, there is mosquito buzzing on your nose. Pretty chiquita, life would be sweeter if your mouth was closed. La, 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 la. Mr. Rodriguez? Uh, uh, who, uh, who is there? It is us, Rocket J. Moose and Bullwinkle J. Squirrel. That isn't us. We'd like to have a few words with you, Mr. Rodriguez. How many words? One or two? See, that's a dandy-looking sword you're polishing. This? Oh, my goodness. Why are you trying to hide it? Say, that's a branding iron with a zero at the end. You must be a rustler. Rustler, my eye, he's zero. Oh, please, senors, I'm a victim of circumstance. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to tell that to the sheriff. Ah, but before they could apprehend the wily bandit, he whistled. <whistles> and out came Esmeralda, who sized up the situation and used her head accordingly. <whistles> Will it be a long, wet winter for our heroes? The answer lies in a watery grave or drown among the sheltering palms. Thanks to a wanted poster in the Mucho Loma Huscao... Guadalupe Rodriguez, wanted for singing songs. Rocky and Bullwinkle finally got a line on the true identity of the bandit Zero. <laughs> Most be jelly, cause jam don't shake like that. Uh, pardon me, senor, but they said you're Guadalupe Rodriguez. It would have been futile for the timid-looking fellow to deny it, for he was caught iron-handed. That branding iron you're cleaning is the one Zero uses. Which can mean only one thing. What's that, Bullwinkle? I was kind of hoping you wouldn't ask. Well, it meant that Senor Rodriguez was the one, the only... May Bush Zero! Let's grab him! Unfortunately, Zero's valiant steed, Esmeralda, ran to the rescue and... <laughs> deposited our heroes at the bottom of the well. Save me, Rock. I can't swim. Oh, for goodness sake, there's only a foot of water down here. Yes, they wouldn't perish from drowning. Yeah, but we might from starvation unless we can climb out. Pull on the rope, Bullwinkle. See if it's strong enough to hold us. The magnificent moose complied. Did you hear what he called me? Please pull on the rope. He never used an adjective like that before. The rope, Bullwinkle. Suppose he's shining up to me for something. Maybe alone. Bullwinkle, if you don't... Okay, Rock. And his mighty muscles strain, tugging desperately at the rope's end, testing its every fiber, investigating every single strand of that life-giving... Magnificent moose, huh? You're just having one of your wordy days, that's all. Well, we can't climb out. I guess it's the old one, too. Ellie! Oh! And happy flew like a veritable bird of paradise, spreading its multicolored... Oh, come on. <clears throat> A rocky plummeted out of the well and in no time lowered a ladder which enabled his comrade to also escape. Now what, Rock? Now we got a score to settle. We're going to catch that zero guy. His flying tail all a bristle, Rocky led the way back into Mucholoma. It wasn't easy getting through the mud, but Rocky was determined to reach Old Berry's five and ten. Si, senors. Do you have any Halloween costumes? Oh, si. But why should anyone dressed like a moose and squirrel require a costume? These, sir, are our naturals. A bit of bargaining, and seconds later behind the old red barn at the far end of town... Starting to get dark, Bullwinkle. Zero will come riding into town just like he always does, and bam, we'll have him. Right. Bam, we'll have him. You're not afraid? I'm fearless. Good. Put on the costume. Uh, why the costume, Rock? We're going to trap Zero with it. Like the man of the five and dime said, if I am dressed like a moose, why on the name of Rudolph Hess do with I With darkness spreading fast, there was no time for an explanation. Rocky took out a coin, flipped it. Tails! <laughs> Bullwinkle was correct. It landed on Rocky's tail and it came up heads. Always a good loser, Bullwinkle withdrew to the confines of the barn. A moment or two later, he appeared as... Mother of Pearl, I'm dressed like Zero. With one exception. Your branding iron has an X at the bottom. You, Bullwinkle, are the bandit X. I know there's not 
not much time left in this episode, so can you tell me how I'm supposed to trap Zero? I'm afraid there's only enough time to look in on the other end of town. <laughs> sure enough, Zero has galloped into stage another of his noisy attacks. What is Rocky's plan? Will his trap work? Don't miss our next magnificent episode. <laughs> oh, there I go again. The unsatisfied costumer, or why not try Brand X? Oh, quickly, we must get to the north end of Mucho Loma. For last time, you may not recall, Rocky instructed Bullwinkle in the art of wearing a disguise. I look like the bandit Zero. Except for one thing. My antlers. Your branding iron. Whereas Zero's had a zero, Bullwinkle's had an X. Don't you see? Zero, come riding into town, you'll jump out. And he'll probably be so shocked at seeing another bandit, he'll probably turn right around and never come back. That word, probably. Couldn't you make that undoubtedly? There was no time for any changes, for just as we closed up shop last time, the object of their attention, and it wasn't Pinky Tomlin, rode into town determined to make more noise than he'd ever made before. yo town! Here's your big mad bandit come to make sure you don't get no sleep! Everybody, turn your eyes! Eggs on the table! Okay, out of the pool! Here we go! The 12 auto is leaving for Memphis! Hey, that sounds like zero! Sounds more like Daddy Warbucks! Down the muddy main street, the noisy desperado road, poking his hot branding iron everywhere! Here he comes! Okay, Bullwinkle, jump out and give him the shock of his life! Bullwinkle jumped out and into the deepest mud hole in town! Stay back, Rock! Don't let the Okie Finoki get you, too! He was on the verge of getting out. As the first rays of sunlight poked themselves up over the hills, the sun and Bullwinkle came out. Hokey smokes, all night wasted. You yeah, and that doggone zero feller got away Bill Scott clean. Not quite, senor. What an agonizing situation to get free of a mud hole only to find a row of rifles pointing at you. Say, what's going on here? Please, to step aside, little one. We only wish to shoot zero. Zero? Where? There. Me? See. Yeah, but he's only dressed like Zero. Don't try to confuse us. Aside from the silly hat, he is the spitting image of our hated enemy. Despite the little squirrel's objections, Bowmichael was unceremoniously dumped into the Mucho Lama jail. The very same jail I was in in episode two. Outside his cell window, an angry mob thought of taking matters into their own hands. Tar and feather the rascal! Deport him to Bayonne, New Jersey. Write a letter to his mother. That's when Rocky brought the judge to Bowmichael's cell. Your Honor, he is not Zero. He is Bullwinkle. I shall ask three questions. Numero one, what would you call a Japanese fighting plane during World War II? Zero. Uh-huh. What was little Lenny Rooney's dog name? Zero. Senor, you are the one we seek. Yeah, but he isn't. He's too smart to be a bandit. Tell him what your IQ is, Bullwinkle. <sighs> you just slammed the lid on my coffin. Where's our sheriff? Asleep. Since we caught Zero, we can siesta. I wish I could siesta. She lives in Frostbite Falls. Well, I guess there's nothing anyone can do. Goodbye, Zero. Goodbye, Rock. Hmm? Oh, um, here's a cigar in case you'd like to smoke. It is okay for him to have this. What harm can a cigar do? What good can it do is what I'd like to know. Just make sure you light it near the cell window. You'll get a bang out of it. Understand? Oh, if only he did understand, for inside that outer wrapping was a stick of TNT. TNT that could blow the back wall down and provide an avenue of escape. Will it come off? Don't miss our next explosive episode, The Inferior Decorator or Wall-Eyed Moose. You may not realize it, but you are about to witness the stirring conclusion of a long story. A timid little minstrel was thrown into jail for singing during siesta. This so infuriated his Latin blood, he became the masked bandit Zero and rode through the village of Mucho Loma, keeping everybody up all night. Bang, bang, bang. It fell to our heroes to bring the noisemaker in. Either that or spend 99 years in jail. Bullwinkle, dressed as Zero, was mistaken for the loud night rider, and as we closed our preceding chapter, was languishing in a cell. I tried to free Bullwinkle, but the judge refused. Finally, in desperation... Which is the only way we do things on this show. I gave Bullwinkle a cigar. But I don't smoke, Rock. You don't have to. Put it near the window. Yes, the stogie contained a lethal stick of TNT. Rocky and the judge left the building while the befuddled moose examined his cigar. Hmm. Put it near the window. Must be a smelly cigar. So saying, he struck a match, applied it to the end. <coughs> what he did next was unbelievable for anyone else but Bullwinkle. He nonchalantly tossed the burning cigar out of the window. Hokey smokes that TNT. will never blow the jail wall down now. The TNT exploded, knocked down the chimney. 
which landed on an awning, the pipes catapulted across the street, crashed through a window, the sharp pieces of glass severed the base of a telephone pole, the pole collapsed right into, you guessed it, Bullwinkle was free. Run for it, Bullwinkle! Alas, the muddy streets of Mucho Loma, English translation, much mud, held our antlered friend fast. So, attempting to escape the who's go, citizens, shoot him. No, wait! I tell you, he's not zero. Okay, little one. We're going to give you just one minute to prove that statement. There wasn't a dry forehead in our group as our valiant hero struggled to come up with a proof. You got 30 seconds. One idea after another flitted through his nimble, squirrel-like brain. 15 seconds. The task seemed insurmountable. And then... I got it! Bye, George. He's got it. What do you got? Rocky didn't answer. He merely flew to a nearby wall, picking up the branding iron with the X along the way. Then, dipping it in the mud, he drew a large, muddy version of a tic-tac-toe game. Let me see. X, zero, X, zero, X, zero, X. Go ahead, Rock. Put another X down at the bottom and you win the game. But it isn't my turn, Bullwinkle. It's zeros. The temptation was too great. Out of nowhere, the masked loudmouth appeared and with a flourish, applied his mark to the wall, winning the game, but losing his freedom. Senor Zero, you are under arrest for a million years. The trial lasted three weeks. Rocky and Bullwinkle appeared as witnesses. You see, Your Honor, Guadalupe didn't know he was breaking the law by singing during siesta. I agree. Okay, we parole him. That is, if there is anyone here who will take him. There was. And to this day, if you ever visit New York City, go see the New York Mets play baseball. Who'll be working the scoreboard? We did score a run so I could take a break. As for Rocky and Bullwinkle... That was a brilliant idea of yours, Rock, that tic-tac-toe game. Thanks, Bullwinkle. Oh, don't thank me. It wasn't my wall you muddied up. Senores... The judge would like very much to see you. Whose war was it, Bullwinkle? I'll give you three guesses. Be with us again in another 30 days for another adventure with Rocky and Bullwinkle. This episode is over, but the very best of my collection is banned on YouTube. To see what you have been missing, go to archive.org and search for Gyro Screw Loose, and I'll see you there. 